Today I'm going to show you four different methods for clamping miter joints. Now I use different methods depending on the project I'm working on, where it fits better, if I need a lot of clamps or less clamps. And so some of these uh, work better in certain situations than others. Now uh, this one you need to buy the specific clamps. The rest are just made out of offcuts and scrap wood that I have from other projects. So uh, it's very convenient and cost effective. If you guys have any other methods that I don't list in here, please go ahead and post down below. Or if you have something I can do differently or better, please let me know and share it with everyone else. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, so the first method I have is using these clamping squares. I got these off of Amazon. They're pretty cheap. I think it was 35 bucks for two sets, which was two clamps. I'm sorry, four clamps and two squares. I use these a lot for drawers or cabinets, uh, sometimes sheet panels. I'll put one at the top and the bottom just to make sure that I do have an exact 90 and then I use other clamps with it. And I have a few tips to help you out with using these that make it easier to clamp miter joints. Okay, so the first thing I like to do is put some blue tape down on the tabletop. This way I don't get any glue on my work surface. And basically the way these work is you put the clamping square on the inside of your miter joint and then you can go ahead and you put your clamps on. Now, one thing I notice is when you use these, these two pieces tend to slide a lot. And as I'm clamping, I get a looser joint here and then I have to loosen it and go back and forth, kind of a pain in the butt. Uh, so one of the things I do is I grab a couple of these bench dogs. I put them on the table and now they give support for my work piece. And once I line up my joint, I can take that square you can see I can put pretty significant force on this and that joint doesn't move. So now uh, with these kind of pre-adjusted, I will set them in place and I'm going to use my thumb and put pressure on this joint while stabilizing it with my fingers here. And I can then push on each piece and it actually kind of applies a clamping force to the joint itself. And I notice I get a lot more squeeze out with glue when I do that. And the other benefit is this is so much simpler to do it this way without a lot of fuss. And then now I have a nice solid joint. Uh, my cut might be off a of hair on this, but I get a really good joint and these work well. But the main limitation to them is this is only an inch and a half wide. As you can see, I don't have too many threads left on here. So if I had wider material for a bigger picture frame or something along those lines, these aren't gonna work well, but for cabinets and drawers, they do. Now, some of the other methods will allow you to use a lot wider material, but these are pretty simple. The second method I have is I just use some wood calls that are made out of some scrap wood. This was just a uh, regular block of plywood that I had left over. I cut a 45 degree bevel on it. And then I use this to create parallel edges to go ahead and clamp my miter joint. And I'll show you how I go ahead and do that. Basically what we're going to do is glue our wood calls onto our work pieces. And we now have a parallel edge that we can use any type of F clamp or whatever you prefer. Now, I like to go ahead and put blue tape and use CA glue to glue it. And then that way when I'm done, it'll peel off nice and not damage my work piece. So the first thing I do is line up my joint with the calls roughly in the position that look good to me. I now grab a straight edge and I'm going to put it where it's pretty close to center of my joint. So when we're clamping, we're putting pressure on the center of the joint and I'm going to adjust my calls to where it's going to be in that same center line or at least close. It doesn't have to be exact, but it does help the joint. Once I get it pretty close, I go ahead and draw a line across all of the pieces. Now I have a reference when I go ahead and apply my CA glue. I just turn these up. I've already applied that blue tape. I've put good pressure on them. And what I'm going to do is apply a little bit of CA glue. I don't want to go too much or it squeezes out. And then on the other side, I'm going to go ahead and apply my activator, which helps speed up the drying process. Now, at this point, since I drew a line, I can go ahead and glue that piece in, hold a little bit of pressure, and even if it's off just a hair, it'll be fine because I can still apply a uh, clamping force to the center. Now I'm going to do it to the other side. Now 
a little bit of that activator. And then now I can get this one nicely glued in place. I like to hold pressure on them. Um, I usually give it about a minute or so. Um, without it, it can take a pretty long time because there's not much air in that joint. Now, when you go ahead and line up your joint, we can now get our F clamp, put it on those parallel edges, and you can put some pressure. And you don't want to go too crazy with this because now we have enough pressure that this would have glue squeeze out. It's not moving. There's no gap and it works really well. The downside to this method is if you have a joint that's not great and you really need to pull it together, if you start tightening this, as you can see, this is holding quite a bit of pressure actually. Eventually, one of the pieces is gonna slide. So that's where our next method comes into play if you don't have a great joint. But on a normal joint, this is gonna be plenty strong enough and it'll do everything you need it to do. Now, method three is one of my favorites just because you can get so much force on those joints. You generally don't need too much. You just need to get the glue to squeeze out. But sometimes if you have a wider miter joint on a big picture frame or something along those lines, um, and you wanna make sure that it's nice and tight, um, these will give you the force needed to get those squeezed together. First thing I'm gonna do is cut the pieces of plywood that I need for the jigs. This is one's gonna be about an inch and a half wide and 10 and a half inches long. That happens to match the other piece of offcut I'm going to use, and inch and a half is a pretty good width that I can use for a smaller wood like three quarter inch or something larger. I'm able to still have enough meat to put bigger clamps on. Ten and a half inches just gives me enough length that I can use multiple clamps to secure the jig. Now this offcut is not a perfect square. It happens to be inch and a half by inch and three quarters doesn't really matter. It's You can use any length or width you want. I'm just marking it so that I don't mix up which sides are the same. So when I screw it to my wood, I don't accidentally screw the wrong side. Now I'm going to make these blocks three inches long and that's going to give me enough room to slide these jigs on the wood and still be able to center my clamps with the center of the miter joint. Now when using the miter saw and trying to do repeatable cuts, I like to use an F clamp and secure a piece of wood as my stop. But when it's got an angled cut, I like to use a piece of wood that already has an angle on it. And that basically gives the wood good support. And then when you butt up the piece you're cutting to the 45, it also makes it a more repeatable cut where if you just have the tip of the wood hitting a stop block, it sometimes slides around or wants to go behind it. This keeps it all nice and straight and you don't have any flying wood while you're working. Now that we have our pieces all cut out, we can now go ahead and attach our wood calls to our plywood. And what we're going to do is line them up, get one of the screws you're going to use. These are inch and a quarter, happens to be some leftover ones I have. Figure out where I can put it where it's not going to stick out. Go ahead and mark that. We're going to just put another line somewhere in that area there. I'm going to do the same on this side. Doesn't have to be exact. Important thing is wherever we drill it, it will not protrude. Now I'm going to turn it on its edge. Go ahead and transfer those lines over, just so when I'm drilling. I have a reference. I'm going to do the same on this one. Go ahead, transfer my lines over. Okay, now what I can go ahead and do is line this up with my wood block. And use this block as a spacer and I'm going to drill two holes that will be for my screws and I like to offset them so I'll put them at a slight angle that keeps this piece if you put them both in the center it likes to rock so I'll go ahead and just drill one there I'll do one just a slight angle over here All right, and before I attach that one, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same with this one just so I can use this piece as a reference to help keep this nice and square while I drill. Go ahead and drill my two holes. that out. 
Now this one, since it's already lined up, I'm going to go ahead and screw these in. You can see right there, it pulled it right into my countersunk coal. Get that guy in. So our first one's done. Second one we're going to line back up. Now it is important that when you go ahead and install these screws that they are countersunk so it doesn't damage your workpiece. And now we have our two jigs made. I really like these and they have a lot of benefit over the other style. I can reuse them. Since I made them thicker now, I can use it for multiple size work pieces. Now we can go ahead and start lining up our miter joint and the end of our work pieces. We wanna make sure they're not sticking over on either end, get them pretty similar. Go ahead and install our clamp. And you can really crank down on these, at least to the point where you're not gonna damage your wood. And if it starts to slide on you, when we put in our other clamp, you can go ahead and apply more clamps to our jig. That's one of the nice benefits of making this a little bit longer. If you had a smaller workpiece, you can make some smaller ones. And then now we can go ahead and install our last clamp right to where our calls are, and it pulls that joint together nice and tight. And I can really put some pressure on it. Now, if this does start to slide, we got two options. You put more clamps here, or you can go ahead and glue some sandpaper on here, give it a little bit of friction. Now this works great. We have a really tight joint here. It's gonna glue and dry up perfect. And we can now go ahead and reuse these for a lot of other projects. Now, if you don't have all this space for multiple clamps, that's where our next method's gonna come into play. And then method four, uh, one of the main benefits for it for me is just it's quick and it's simple and it works and I need less clamps. So we're gonna get our piece of wood that's a square, perfect square. This one's about six inches by six inches. Go ahead, take my straight edge and put it from corner to corner. Draw a line. Go ahead, rotate it. Draw another line from corner to corner. And now this has done two things. We have found the center and it's giving us a nice 90 degree right angle in the center. I'm gonna go ahead and take a inch and a half Forstner bit and drill a hole out in the center of that hole. Now that we have a hole in the center, we are going to cut this piece out along these lines. Okay, now that we have our hole drilled and our bottom piece cut out, we take the larger portion of our jig, put it on the outside of our miter joint, take the smaller piece, put it on the inside. We have relief from drilling that hole to where we're not interfering with the joint itself. And go ahead and take a squeeze clamp. Go ahead, start to squeeze it together. If you need to, you can go ahead and tap your pieces in a little bit. Go ahead, tighten it up. So these are the four methods I use the most. There's a couple I use more often than not, and there's some pros to each one. Uh, method one, uh, pros are, you may already have these. They work well, and it guarantees you a, an actual 90, as long as the ones you're using are a, a square 90, and these ones are. I do have links down below for them, so if you want to get them, they're down there. Uh, method two, I use in a lot of situations where I have funky angles, and I can just use the off cuts from that project glue them on with some tape and CA glue. And if you could see down here, I have this project that had some funny angles. I don't even actually know what the angles were because of the way I built it. And these worked out really good to get everything glued up. Now method three, I'd say the biggest pro is it's by far the most secure method. You can get a lot of clamping force if needed on bigger miter joints that don't wanna to come together just right um, or thicker pieces that have a little bit more trouble. Um, and it works out really well. The cons are you can use a lot more clamps. So for one joint, you might use three or five clamps. Method four, the obvious benefit is you use one clamp. It's pretty simple and it's pretty much stuff you already have. And you can do a handful of joints with this pretty simple. And with some squeeze clamps, it's fast.